Good afternoon, viewers. viewers. Welcome, Welcome to this and another series in Ag Camp Live. Do remember, remember to join us on our various platform as we, as we continue to inform, elucidate, and educate our farmers in the best practices in agriculture. I must say that we have published our 2021 calendar, and I do implore all our farmers or even home, home gardeners to acquire your own copy. Remember, Remember it's more than, than just a calendar. calendar. It's actually an informative guide of the various products and services that we offer. It details month by month different products, as well as how to use and what to do in the event that you still are planting. Additionally, it provides the guidelines and parameters that you should observe when using our various pesticides or pesticides in general. And I must say to you that, again, it's a collector's item. So as you flip through, you'll find more than sufficient reason to hold or to retain your copy. This afternoon, we'll be speaking on pest management. Why are these so important and how do we go about ensuring that the population sizes are limited. Additionally, we will also be showcasing the different field and of course, store work that we have been doing so as to ensure that you see how effective these chemistries are. So let's dive into the matter. So we'll do an overview of the pest management strategies. Uh, we will look at our approach in terms of controlling mites, caterpillars, thrips, leaf miners, and among other insect pests. But more importantly, what are pests? And why should we want to control them? Now, a pest is an organism that is going to be competing for food, space, nutrient in some instances, and can result in economic loss. These losses can be as severe as total wipeout, or could be a partial. Nonetheless, it's a loss that, of course, will see the farmer losing revenue. Additionally, it could simply be an annoyance to human beings. And so ensure that we provide you with the necessary strategies to control them. Now, how do we look at this situation and how do you go about controlling pests? It's a systematic approach, but it, it's long term. When you look at pests, you want to be managing it from the very onset. So if you are planning to go into agriculture, first and foremost, this is one key area that you need good and sound background information on. The other method is emphasized on prevention as well as reduction in the population size. Remember, if the population is lower, then it simply means that the effect also will be lower. Thirdly, we also look at the conditions that favor these organisms. And at best, we try to eliminate them. So in instances where you have your fields and the edges are have shrubs or weeds around them, we generally say to our farmers, ensure that you reduce these numbers. If in the field, of course, contains weeds, remember, these weeds serve as hosts for these pests. And so we encourage you to do the same. Additionally, we want to look also at the limited approach in terms of the various types, the amounts of pesticides that you use, because we also consider the requirements of the grower and at the same time, the conditions under which you're growing and of course, the type of crop that you're growing. Now, also, we always say to our farmers in using these, insect, these pesticides, we want to use wetting agents or surfactants or penetrants. Now, the idea is to get the maximum use of this product by ensuring better coverage and greater levels of absorption, which will result in a better kill. Now, additionally, we say to our farmers, monitor, monitor, monitor. That is done through effective scouting. Know your field. You should not be farming and you are not monitoring by walking through your field. This, of course, can be achieved through different ways, through an H or a Z 
or just in any ad hoc manner observing the plants? Where do you look, perhaps you might ask? On the underside of the leaves, on the apical part or the growing regions, or even on the soil surface to see who is present and the numbers that are present. And of course, this then will determine or allow you to determine how to, no, no, how to control or how to bring down the population sizes into a manner where the economic threshold is significantly lower. And of course, that terminology will break down for you later on in this program. The other idea too is by suppression. You also want to encourage the natural enemies that are present, but at the same time, you could use a combined approach. It could also be a biological agent with other parameters in terms of screening, whether you plant corn or grasses around the field, and at the same time, engage with using softer chemistries. So you see farmers, it's not just to go to a farm store and to grab the first thing. It's a multi-mode approach so as to control insect pests. Now, a key argument in controlling in insect pests is this next factor, pest resistance. Now, if you repeatedly use the same chemistry, what will occur? Each organism that is missed or you have not killed can adapt and survive. And if that occurs, the subsequent or the new generations, of course, what is going to happen? They too will now resist this chemistry at the concentration that you would have previously used to control them. So if you're in your field, you're observing that you have been using one product too frequently, then you want to also consider this. Another argument for pest resistant measures is to know the active ingredient. Why is this important, you might ask? If you know the active ingredient, you will not make the mistake or the error of choosing similar families or classes of pesticides. Additionally, some trade names are different, but the active ingredient is what is critical. So you'll have instances where the same amber mectin is on the market. However, the trade names are different. And so you might be of the opinion that you're rotating, as with some instances. But what do you find out? When you go deeper and look at the active ingredient, all you would have changed is the name of the chemistry. So bear these tips in mind as we continue. Another factor in looking at resistance management is the, as I said earlier, your product selection. Additionally, how much do you use as well as the frequency with which you use them? Now, if you use one class of product in the earlier stage of the crop, it is best to leave and move on to other classes as you go further down. Now then, the calibration as well as the coverage you're using, whether that be a knapsack sprayer or a motorized equipment, also needs to be calibrated in such a way that it delivers the chemistry to the target area or surface of the plant. What this means is that you get better wetting and better coverage. And of course, need I remind you, you add your sticker or your spreaders to it. Here at Adkem Plant, we have several, um, which we will discuss further. The timing of the application is another factor that you need to remember. Now, whether it be the stage of the development of the crop, or the state of development of the pest, you need to be guarded in terms of your approach. The quality of the water, its pH, whether solids are dissolved. Sometimes farmers, I know, you are nearby a water hole or a river and you simply scoop up some water. But that water in its question also contributes to the reduction you will miss or you will not have the amount delivered because you've altered the chemistry as you mixed. Another weather conditions. Now farmers, they are best practices in farming. And one of the key is that you try to target your applications late afternoon or early morning. In this way, you don't have volatilization. The, the, the product doesn't evaporate or you don't find a situation where when you do apply, you run yourself in the challenge of the heavy wind drifting or causing any problems. Look at this picture and let's assess it for a moment.
Do you see what I'm saying, farmers? In the midst of this mist, there lies a farmer. Two things are happening. Both his health is at concern and also the drifting that is occurring. No, he would have been trying his best to apply the chemistry, but a lot of it would have been vaporized. Now, if this occurs, then what, does, what is happening here? It's simply being blown away by the wind. Additionally, if it were earlier in the day, the sun would have been just evaporating this product. And so you might find that you say you applied and you're saying that the chemistry is not working, but guess what? These are the factors that must be brought to be management are the monitoring. Did I say earlier? Scout, scout, scout. Walk through the field, man. It's yours, of course. You would have invested more time and energy into seeds and a, and a very good plot. So put in monitoring as a part of your safety net. Now, on this sticky trap, you can see the high levels of insect pests. What would you say should have been done at this point in time? Would this farmer be too late in moving in with unknown chemistry? Or could you say that scouting was being done based on the population size and number? Well, there are many responses that could be had. But one of the key things to remember, farmers, is in monitoring your plot, this tool would have informed you as to how to approach the space. If this were a cantaloupe or a watermelon, you now need to know that you need a product that is going to be controlling your trips because what be a significant reduction in your fruit set, flower set. Again, too, in monitoring, what you're looking at is the economic threshold. What does this mean? It simply means that how much of these pests can you tolerate? And what method would you use to respond? No, if you were growing cabbage, for example, how many diamond bark moth or damage to the leaves would inform or signal to you that you need to take a different approach or to use a different chemistry in, in controlling the population size? Again, the key is reduction in numbers. The smaller the pest population, the lower the effects of the damage in your field. Now, we want to dive deeper into some strategic approaches as to controlling your insect pest. And may I remind you also that you can share this video with your local farmer friend and at the same time, collect your 2021 calendar at your local farm stores. Some of these very strategies we speak of are right at your fingertips. Now, let's move on to the mite strategy. Now, here again, early detection plays a critical role. Mites, of course, will result in the apical parts or the growing parts of the plant becoming twisted and the terminal buds stunted. If this occurs, it simply means that your productive levels of the plants are moving backwards. The plant will, of course, abort blossoms, and because there's no apical growth, then fruit set will, of course, diminish. Additionally, if those fruits actually make it out, they will be discolored. In other words, you'll see markings or striations right around them. The fruits will be coarse in the case of your sweet peppers. Had it been watermelons or any other crop, you'll see the markings, the horizontal lines on them. Now, note carefully too, that if this occurs, then your productive capacity is now going down. Now, if you look at the picture to the left of the screen, you see a strawberry plant. Now, this could be misconstrued as nutrition. But a closer look, you would recognize that these are actually red spider mites on the surface of the leaves. Or because of the feeding habit of the mite, it's actually causing the discoloration to occur. So many things could be misconstrued in terms of farming. Now, knowing and arming yourself with what to do and how to do is critical. And that's why you have joined us here today. The infestation, of course, needs to be monitored. And once you start monitoring, you ensure that you reduce the population sizes. Here's another situation that I was explaining to you earlier. With the apical portions becoming smaller and being reduced. Once this occurs, then all that is going to be happening is the productive capacity reduces. 
the plant might even go under stress and the very blossoms that are present are aborted. The plant starts doing what they call now natural selection. It can bother, preserve some, grow more seed, and abort some other fruits. Here again is another situation where the plants are showing might literally stop growing. In this situation, the bronzing of the underside of the leaves tends to occur as well as in the apical portions. Now, because they are feeding in such a heavy manner on these softer tissues, then they tend to break down the surfaces because they are damaging the cells and they are pulling the sap from those cells. And so they die and they become what is called necrotic or they simply die. Here on the far right is an image where you see red spider mites on tomatoes. Now you might not be saying to yourself, are you sure? But if you look at the numbers that are present, it simply means that monitoring would not have been taking place effectively. Or that the observations that are not so keen to the extent where it is overlooked and it is thought to be something else. Now, by now, you must be asking yourself, then, Mr. Parker, how do you control this? And here goes. The strategy involves using preventatively, refas, or cure. This can be incorporated in your weekly or fortnightly applications. Now, refas is a miticide and insecticide. It also has fungicidal properties and it controls soft body insects. Of course, as I said to you earlier, mites, in some cases, aphids are controlled. Now, you use this in rotation. Why is it so? You remember I mentioned to you earlier about resistance. If you use the same chemistry repeatedly or too frequently, or if you use the same class of chemistry, then what could also occur is a buildup of tolerance. Now, cure is used in this mixture. Now, should you have a severe problem, as I'd shown you in the previous slide, then you do a combined approach. You use cure along with Nizoron. Now, when this approach is taken, what you're really doing is Nizoron will be assisting to kill the eggs because of the ovicidal properties it contains, as well as some of the nymphal stages, while the cure would be controlling the adults and smaller juveniles. Now, when you do the combined approach, which is cure plus Nizoron, what you end up with is a complete reduction in the life cycle. Note carefully now, the life cycle. So you're rounding up the entire population and lowering those levels. In some instances, you would have sprayed like a cure and you're seeing the issue just the same. Some of the eggs would have still been present. And so the combined approach. Now cure has a translaminar action. So even though you're spraying on the upper surface of the leaf, it has a penetrant effect. So the lower parts of the tissues of the plant, so the product will penetrate and control. Now bear in mind that the Coverage is also critical in doing your application. Now, we're not saying that you should bathe the plant, but ensure that the sprayer is so calibrated that the mist that is coming out comes out so much that the smaller areas of the plant are reached and that you move through the field in such a way so as to allow for greater coverage. Let's look at another issue that has been plaguing us for some time. And these are leaf miners. It has been popular in tomato in recent times. And even the ministry has put out a bulletin indicating that we should be on the lookout for this. And why is this so? Leaf miners tend to feed on or tunnels through the leaves. So just imagine how narrow or small a leaf is. And yet an organism penetrates that leaf and mines through it and makes a tunnel. Now, bear in mind that these insect pests can be devastating. Now, if you look at the image far left, you know the levels of damage that would have been done to of the insect pests tunneling through the leaves. That suggests to you that the population size is too high. Now, you might be asking yourself at this time, what could have been done to reduce the population levels? Again, 
acting is critical, the use of different monitoring tools, and at the same time, using a safe and effective insecticide also gets the job done. And so in controlling leaf miners, we look at car tracks or definite as preventative or early signs of the issue. Now, bear in mind that these organisms are inside the leaf, but the adults sizes. Because the eggs are deposited on the leaves, it simply means that those two will be controlled. Now, in cases where there are severe infestation or you want to do a curative action, then cure or caprid can be your go-to systemic products. Now, again, both of which provides an excellent response in terms of control measure. Cure, as I mentioned to you earlier, has translaminar action. What did I say this mean? It simply means that it can penetrate through what you call the cuticle and the epidermis of the leaf surface, causing a high level control. In the case of Caprid, what it is, it's a double systemic product. And this, of course, lends itself to the nature of Caprid, a wide range of kill, but an effective chemistry in using this product. Let's move on to another issue that could be very well be causing damage to your crops. And these are caterpillars or worms in some cases. Now for farmers who have vegetables, Agchem offers an excellent worm strategy, both preventatively as well as curatively. Now the strategy involved using an insect regulator. You might be asking, hmm, what is this you're talking about? Now what it simply does is to prevent the organism from growing much further. So it regulates the growth. So once they come in contact with it or they feed on a leaf that contains the product, then growth is stopped and the organism goes or the worms go into what is called molting. The other approach is to use a systemic or a contact product with an adjuvant to knock down the pest population. Now, of course, crops such as callaloo, your cabbage or your broccoli or your cauliflower tends to have an attractant to these pests. And so you want to be in the preventative rather than the curative. Again, the threshold, as I'd mentioned to you earlier, is what is critical. If it is that the population becomes too high, especially in the case of cabbage with diamond bark moth, then what are you growing? Can't be strainer, right? No. So you want to be in the preventative rather than the curative action. Now, how does our strategy work? It works by creating a quick knockdown of the adult population. Why do you control the adult population? You want to do this because if there are no egg laying activities, it simply means that the stages of reproduction are controlled. If all of those stages are controlled, it simply means that the population in terms of the larva stage is also in a reduced situation. The other strategy is that when you apply our products, it does what is called, it paralyzes the insect, causing them to stop feeding. So you might go in the field, see the organism, but guess what? It's only there one place. Can't buy the leaf anymore, can't chew on anything because the chemistry would have prevented this from occurring. Now, further on, in some instances, there is what is called forced molting, or it goes immediately to death. And so the goal, again, you want to be in a position where you can go clean, excellent quality vegetables. Now, let's dissect the strategy in terms of what is used. Now, Mimic, of course, is the product that I was referring to earlier as an insect growth regulator. It has a low mammalian toxicity. It also has a very zero effect on the environment because of how it is. It is also rain fast. And why is this important? It becomes important because it becomes effective immediately on the surface of the leaf. So if you should have rainfall, it does not erode or wash away. Again too, it fits into your different IPM strategy especially if you want to be growing crops like kale, where you want to be harvesting on a weekly basis. Now with this, again, the pre-harvest interval also comes into mind. Because it has such a low and narrow range, then the pre-harvest is literally zero days. 
And so you get effective control with almost immediate ability to bring to market. Organisms such as your army worms, your diamondback moth larvae, your cabbage loop or your cutworms, your corn earworms, or even your hornworms are controlled using Mimic. Now, with this strategy also flying around, Caratrax has the ability to give them a quick notification is coming into check. There's no reproduction. If there's no reproduction, then there can be no further damage to the crop. Now then, it controls a wide range of insect pests, but also has a very high residual activity. And this becomes important should you spray and the moth or the larvae was not present at the time and they come into the field thereafter because of the residual action, they too will be controlled. Um, further on in the strategy is the use of a product or adjuvant called Newfim P. Now, what is really Newfim P? It's a spreader sticker wetting agent. And why does it become important to have better surface tension? Now, if the water can wet better, follow me now, it simply means that you'll have better coverage. And if you have better coverage, then you have better delivery far more effectively. And if this occurs, then what you'll end up now is with better control of the insect pest. Now, it also reduces the harsh effect of the chemistry, especially when you have rain UV light. Now, what does that mean? It simply means that it allows for the chemistry down first and then covers over so you don't have any breakdown by sunlight over the period of time that the crops are exposed. Now if you notice also the image on my left where the hearts of the cabbage are a bit glossy, that's what it does. It also helps the farmer to know where I'm, farm, where, where I'm spraying. So when you apply, you see that area that is wet and so the product is better able to bond to the surface of the plant leaf as well as but it's an excellent broad spectrum insecticide that is very effective in controlling lepidopteran larvae or caterpillars as we know it. Now, the reason why it gives you this superior control is that upon ingestion, but they can't go any further and they cannot do any feeding. This occur within 24 hours or even earlier. It's also rain fast within because it has bonded to the surface of the leaf. Um, in terms of the application rate, pretty low, which is also good. 5 to 10 mils are 1 to 2 teaspoons per gallon of water. And again, you can apply this in rotation. So let's say you're growing cabbage anywhere from 3 weeks onwards, you can start to use Indicarb. And this will give you an excellent control in the, the population levels. Are we understanding so far? I trust that you are gaining knowledge and learning as you continue. Let's look on another pesky pest as we continue our journey. Now, thrips are tiny, slender organisms. Now, I took this picture with a cell phone, and it took me quite a long time to focus these lens to get them where they are. But here they are. Now, because they are so small, they can be overlooked. Additionally, they are feeding on the surface of the leaf. And again, if you are damaging the leaf, you're damaging the, literally the engine or the photosynthetic area of the plant. And if this is happening, it simply means that the plants go under stress. And if the plants are stressed out, then they there will be a significant reduction in the productive capacity of the plant. Now, what it also does is that it sucks the sap and wherever it penetrates the plant, it can also be transmitting a virus. And this is why it becomes so important to have these insect pests under control. Now the life cycle, of course, can be great. And it also can have a situation where if you're in a field, then it can be completing its life cycle right there in your field. The eggs can also fall off in the soil or on the leaf litter or even on plant debris. And as soon as the conditions become favorable, they start all over again. Now, in areas like your kellets and your bog hole and in the northern side, you have a situation where these very insects are transmitting a virus that is actually causing damage to the lettuce plant. And so it becomes unmarketable and the growth literally stops.
again, in crops such as onions and scallions, what you find happening is that you see the striations or the markings because of their rasping mouth parts. They literally scrape the surface of the leaves, causing further damage. It could either be to the tips of the plant or even to the stalk of the scallion or the onion. In the case of your tomatoes and your sweet peppers, the fruits also will be damaged. And you'll see, you'll see noted, noticeable reduction in the yield as well as the market quality of your produce. How do you control trips, you might ask? Botanic guard. You have definite and also caprid. These, we recommend that you put in your rotation cycle so as to get very good control of your insect pests. Now, botanic guard is one of the biologicals that we'll be speaking on further. But definite is a contact insecticide. And it works, of course, when it comes in contact with the insect pest. It has a very low application rate of one teaspoon per gallon. And this can be utilized every seven to 14 days with rotation where caprid is used. Now let's look at some field work that was done with Botanigard and the results that came about. Botanigard is a biological insecticide that actually contains a live spore of a fungus called Bovira bassiani. Now what this really does is that when you apply it to the exposed insect or to the surface leaf, surface of the leaf, and the insects become in contact with it, it grows, the spores literally attaches itself to the insect body, grows and penetrates the insect pest, causing what is these white puffy things on the surface of the leaf are actually insects that were controlled by using botanic guard. And once the plant, once they are exposed to it, then survival becomes little to none in terms of the insect pest. Now, the beauty about botanic guard is the nature of the is the nature of the product, the chemistry itself. In that, once you apply, the pre-harvest interval becomes pretty low, which is zero days, and the flexibility in terms of the range of control is also another thing. It controls both white flies, aphids, trips, you name it, all pests that becomes very, very troublesome for farmers are white flies. Now farmers, I must say this to you. Once the temperatures start to become warmer, then white flies, trips, and aphids tend to reproduce faster. And in doing so, then the population so you'll not find that they will move from far distances. For farmers who have like screen houses and so on, they tend to be around. Crops such as your tomatoes or your sweet peppers are also favored for white flies. Now, products such as Danitol can be used to knock down this insect pest. It has a very fast stomach action and acts on the nervous system of the pest, causing control. There also, it also contains what is called ovicidal properties. And what this really does is that it controls the egg stages of the insect pest. Here are some examples of the life cycles that are present. Actually, once they are on the underside of the leaf, it simply means that they're not just feeding only, that also reproduction is taking place. And again, with all major species, continuation is always a factor. And so you want to get on top of the population as quickly as possible because they can find themselves into hard to reach areas and lay eggs and the populations are continued. Now, if you look at the image to the left of the screen, this high level population size tells you that little to no monitoring was taking place. And so here again, farmers, the onus is on us to scout, to go through your field, and to ensure that the population sizes are monitored and the appropriate chemistries are utilized. Here again, Caprid in rotation with Donital is an excellent product that can be utilized to control white flies. It controls literally all stages or most of the stages of the life cycle of the white fly, thereby causing 
excellent control. The population levels are reduced within 14 to 21 days after the application. Now, bear in mind too that you are preventing further population explosion because of the nature of the chemistry and you're also doing so by ensuring that you are rotating the different products that can be used in the control. So Danital and Caprid for white fly control. Now, in recent times, this organism has started to become a serious pest in what we call dashin. And these are the taro leafhoppers. And what they do, these are sucking insects that are piercing and pulling the sap from the plant. And once they are there, they are going to be damaging the leaf area, damaging the stalks, causing death, as well as a re reduction in the vitality and the productive capacity of the plant. And again, if you note, Caprid along with Danitol becomes a very key player in the control of these insect pests. And of course, in recent times, we found Indicarb to be a very effective chemistry in reducing the population sizes of your taro leaf hoppers. It's a very serious issue, and we always recommend to our farmers to, of course, get clean planting material, and at the same time, ensure that you use these products in rotation. Now, I trust that you would have been taking notes and you'd have been absorbing this information as we continue our look at various insect pests. Now then, Bear in mind, farmers, that these strategies are tools to be employed. So let's not focus on trying to remember everything, but to arm yourselves with the kind of strategy so as to ensure that you know how to do. Again, in recapping, our chemistries are such that they are wide in range and effective in controlling various to all stages of the life cycle of the insect pest. And why is this important? Again, if you're knocking down the adults, remember, they would have laid previously. And so if those eggs are there and you're only focused on the adults, then you would have allowing, you're allowing for a re renewing of the population sizes. The chemistries also that we supply are compatible with various products, whether it be nutrients or adjuvants that are on the market. Another key factor is the low toxicity. Note our focus on green band products, such as your reefers and your botanic garden. Again, too, we have precise chemistries. That now then, if you do have questions, might I just suggest that you post or you share with us in your various platform that you're following so you can feel free to share at this time and of course we do have a question to ask so as to allow one of our participants this afternoon to walk away with a product um it's a lovely gift i am told and so i would definitely want you to have the use of this product. Um, at this time, are there questions? Um, question from Instagram. Brian sure. Bennett, how do you control grub? Okay, how do you control the grub? Now, remember now, the grubs are underground. And if it is that it's in your sweet potato or in your soil in question, then you need to be putting in the insecticide in the soil. If you have an irrigation system, what I've suggested to farmers prior to planting or during your production cycle, you use diazinon and you add through your nutrient tanks or you can use your injectors or pumps to pump the chemistry into the soil on the field. So I hope I'm getting through to um, Brian clearly. You, uh, you can either do spot treatments, of course, with your knapsack sprayer, but of course, if the acreages are large, then... It's a whole lot of work now to cover, right, Brian? So through your irrigation system, whether you're using a bulk tank or if you have a venturi setup or if you have a pump that you're moving water, you can inject the product directly into the soil. Now, if it's a soil injection, bear in mind that the application rate now becomes critical. The 
Diazonan is used at 15 to 30 mils. If you're doing a soil injection, we normally recommend that you go to the higher rate. Do a saturation first. So moisten the soil and then you apply the chemistry. Why is this so? The product can move through the different layers of the soil and kill the insect pest you're targeting. Another, Another question, question, Mr. Parker. If, if I apply cure and nisoran to control mites and I'm not seeing any growth or any response from the plants, what else can I do? All right. Now, if the mite infestation is severe and you use cure and nisoran and you're not seeing any response within a 7 to 14 day period, remember that they would have been feeding on the apical parts of the plant, right? And if this is so, it's usually stunted. The plant is under stress. What we normally recommend is you use a biostimulant to get the plant moving again. Again, we can use either cytokine or cytoplex in conjunction with green stim and nutrient express. Now, that strategy simply helps the plant to recover quickly. Now, let's say you wanted to do a complete mix. So you're seeing the issue. It's dense, it's large scale, and you don't want to wait until the plant recover on its own. You can put cure with nizaron with your cytokine or cytoplex and your green stim, which is your stress reliever, and you apply accordingly. One last question. You mentioned botanic guard as a biological insecticide. Yes. What are the advantages of using a biological pest control strategy? Wow. So what are the advantages? There are, see, there, 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 there are key factors in going biological, no farmers. It's targeted, meaning the population size that is controlled is limited to a certain number of pests, you won't harm your beneficials. That's one. Two, your the response time, as well as the longevity in terms of the surface retention, is also greater. So in the case of Botanic Guard, you can get a quick knockdown, but the residue action is also there. So should the population spike again, you have a not the product is still on the surface of the leaf. Additionally, the pre-harvest interval. And in the case of botany guard, that is zero days. So bearing in mind that you're using a biological agent, it is not harmful to humans, only to the pests. So let's say you were to come to market within a short time, you can use your botany guard or even reefers without having to worry that you have applied an insecticide and you're unable to um, harvest. Now, bear in mind too that we have persons in the field and these are agronomists, whether they are your sales agronomists or your product development agronomists. Now, in the eastern side, the northeastern side, that's your Dennis Lecky, who is your agronomist. He works with, um, in the north, sorry, the, the, the northern side of the, of, of, of that um, area. So parishes such as St. And, St. Mary and Portland, Dennis is your representative who you can get in touch with. John o. Johnson is in the lower side where Dennis is concerned. He covers St. Catherine, St. Andrew and St. Thomas. In the Western side, there is Dale Smith and he covers Hanover, St. James and Trelawney. And of course, Sian Spent is in the southeast, southwest side, and he covers, of course, Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth. And of course, yours truly in the central part, which is Manchester and Clarendon. So feel free to reach out to us for any questions or queries. And of course, do remember to share this video, like, comment. Leave a question, if so be the case. Additionally, bear in mind too that we are on Power 106 this and every Wednesday, where our Farming Today feature, where you can also be engaged in your knowledge increase. Now then, for the question of the day, I call it Know Your Side. And I'm sure if it's your left side or your right side. However, Feel free to type and respond to the various social media platforms. Someone is awaiting that post. Name the product that is biological in nature. 
and that can be used to control thrips and other insect pests. So name one of our chemistries that is biological in nature and that can be used to control thrips and other insect pests that are in your field. Um, the person who is responding, someone is already... Shana K. Shana K. I hear you responded what? Botany Guard. And of course, that is correct. Now, do remember to share your contact information with us. So if you can message us privately, do so. So And your location, of course, so we can um, get in touch with you and uh, make arrangements to have your prize sent out to you. And of course, when you receive your prize, strike a pose, and of course, up, upload that picture on our Instagram or our Facebook page and let Jamaica know that you participated and you won. Thanks for joining us this in the series of Alchem Plant Live. We do hope that you continue to remain safe and that you follow the various protocols and be good to your neighbor. We're signing out for now.